show where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. I want to thank Thomas and Ethel from California Balsamic who sponsor this show and provide every guest that lives in the United States two free samples of their wonderful balsamic vinegar. My guest today is one of the most beautiful and dynamic people you will ever eat. I'm going to tell you her age, or she will, but not right away, because I want you to guess it first, because you are <laughs> going to be blown away what a plant-based diet can do in terms of just how you look and feel. She has a wonderful restaurant in Los, well, actually in Inglewood, but I still say Los Angeles, called Stuff I Eat that has just delicious soul food and just yummy, yummy food for people, especially that aren't even vegan. You could take anyone there. And she is going to be making a creamy shiitake mushroom soup today. She has a wonderful book called Cash In on Cashews, and her name is Chef Babette. Thank you so much for coming here. I'm so excited. It, you are definitely worth the wait. Oh, you are a doll. Hey, AJ. How's it going? How, so your restaurant has reopened, right? Or maybe it never closed. We never closed. We had to keep it moving, girl. We black folks, you know, <laughs> we just we just make it work. That's what happens. But yeah, my thank you so much for having me on the show today. And may I please say that you look amazing. Well, thank you. I'm ten. I'm going to give everybody a hint. I'm ten years behind you, but I mean, I swear you must get you must get carded. You don't look like you're a day over forty. You're just such a doll, actually. Um, I'll be 70 years old, December 7th, and AJ and I were just talking about our birthdays and are we going to be, am I going to be able to really celebrate the 70th? And she was like, I didn't get to really celebrate the 60th because of COVID, but um, hopefully I'll be able to do something fantastic for my 70th. That's a big year, you know? You know what I love about you? Obviously, you're beautiful and everything, and you're a great chef, but you're always so positive. You just, you're, you're just like a kind person. Is that how you've always been? Always been really, really kind and very, very sensitive. So I get my feelings hurt easily because I just feel like we should all take care of one another. I mean, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to inflict pain and I don't want to feel pain. So I just try to put out what I give back. Yeah. What you're, one of, you're one of the funnest presenters. I had the opportunity a couple of times at Dr. Baxter Montgomery's conference to, oh, to present with her, fun. with Dr. Terry Mason. What a trio we made. We but had fun. You were, you could be so silly, AJ. Luckily, you guys have good, I will never forget what went on in the back of that limo, but that hey, was. I was, just, I was just about to say that when you came up with that little, uh, yeah. Whatever that was. Yeah, we've, we've, we're not going to say this because this is a PG show. But the fact that you and Dr. Mason had such great senses of humor has made me just love you, love you all the more, all the more. So when did you first get into plant-based eating? And when did you when did you start a restaurant? I mean, I worked in a restaurant and that was hard enough, but you own oh my a restaurant. God. Is that the hardest work ever? And it you're is. never done, right? You're never done. Well, um, let's see now. I met my current husband, Rondell Davis, in 1990. And he shared the two books that I share with everybody because these books completely and totally changed my life. And they were Fit for Life Volumes 1 and 2 by Harvey and Marilyn Diamond and The Mucusless Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold Arid. Believe me when I tell you, when I read those books, <laughs> I, I just went vegan, cold turkey. It was like, okay, I'm done. I had a multitude of issues. I couldn't digest food. I was just, it was just, I was miserable after I ate, whenever I ate. Uh, I knew nothing about combining food. So everything that was listed in that book, uh, all the things that you should not do, I was doing. And um, my skin was a wreck, uh, uh, eczema, asthma, uh, just, I just wasn't feeling good. And so, I read the books it, 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 and mo both, both books basically appeal to your common sense. You don't have to be a professor to understand what's in them. And uh, I just made the transition and it was the best thing I've ever done. It's the best thing I've ever done in my life, really and truly. It completely and totally changed my life. And that was in 1990. So here we are at 2020 and uh, almost 70 years old, still running heels, actually went out and ran some yesterday. Um, doing whatever I want to do. I'm on no medication. I don't even have a primary care physician. <laughs> so I, you know how it goes, AJ. It's just like at 40, I made the transition. 
and the aging process just slows down because you're feeding yourself, you're, you're giving yourself the nutrients and you know what I mean? You're, you're giving yourself life. And, and so I haven't moved too much further. Now I see the changes, but they're subtle and I can work with subtle. That's, that works for me. So yeah, it's been what? A long time now. How many years is that? Since 1990 to 2020? Woo, that's been a while. Been, I think 30 years, right? Yeah, about yeah. 30. Yeah. So so it, it's never too late to start. Never too late. Never too late. Yeah. So how did you get into owning a restaurant? That is really difficult because you're, you know, you're you're working when everybody else isn't. Exactly. I um run, I went to Agape Spiritual Center. And um, but first I started at, I don't know, do you remember Dr. O. C. Smith? God didn't make little green apples. Okay, don't make me cry. Do I remember I him? I did you just love OC? I I I, I named my house. I, I, oh, I loved him more than I. Yes, I totally remember him. Okay. I went to okay. I went to his place called the Proud Bird, and yes, I, I, that's I, where I start. I started, but but I started when they moved. I I started at his church at the Proud Bird too, and then they moved into the big building. And that is where I started with customers over there. I had like about maybe 20, 30 customers after church, after services. He allowed me to come in and I set up my, uh, all of my little dishes in their small kitchen and um, had an opportunity to go to Japan to do some singing and went to Japan. And while I was there, I was the only person in the group that was cooking working out everybody else was writing music singing songs practicing all day and I, that's when i knew singing is not my lick i am going to start myself a food business when i get back to the states and that's exactly what i did next thing you know i'm over at agape spiritual center uh, my husband joins me and we um build ourselves a 15 foot cart that has a griddle, refrigeration, all, everything that we need. And before you know it, they allowed us to set up on the lot. And before you know it, we had we were serving black block long lines of people, and we knew we had a good product and just simple food, the same stuff that I'm serving at stuff I eat, you know. And especially when we're when we're transitioning and we're changing our palates, it's like. Can you not take me too far away from what I'm accustomed to, what I'm used to? It, it just makes it a little bit easier because some people are stressed out when they, they feel like they want to transition. It's like a huge deal. Oh, my God, what am I going to eat? And AJ, you know, you can eat almost anything. You just stay away from death. And it absolutely it works. Elza says, gorgeous, stylish, smart, spiritual, ah. and a good cook. Congratulations. Oh. And I admire her. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're just, you, you got it all, really. <laughs> you're a sweetheart, honey. And people, Susan so, yeah, says, I love her energy. Also, one thing you can do that I still can't is you can do your age in push ups. Oh, yeah. I can, I can still do the push ups, but no, 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 not my age. Now. I'm getting too old. Uh, uh, I'm getting too old, baby. S 70. No, I'm not doing 70. I can still do 30, but I'm not doing 70. And and you know, with, with any workout, you got to stay on it or you lose it. I remember when I was hanging with you. Remember when you challenged me at the first event that you invited me to? I said, I can still do push-ups. And you said, do them. I was like, no, she did not. <laughs> <gasps> you are just you are too much fun too much fun so you how many books have you written i know you have cash on, cash in cash on I cashews i have just finished my second one it's going to be an ebook it's called stuff your stuff and uh i'm just waiting for my daughter to finish the whole editing process and you know i'm going to put it out as an ebook but the first book was cash in on cashews and uh that's basically a dessert desserts made with the cashew nut 50 plus desserts made with the cashew nut most of them are raw but there's some cooked items in there too why cashews specifically when it comes to well nuts? because cashews are amazing and they just you come on you know that you can take the cashew nut you can make the cashew nut savory you can make it sweet the cashew nut is awesome i just i feel badly for those people that are allergic to that nut i love that nut yeah 
So, and, and AJ, come on. I wasn't a trained chef. I just start, we started making ourselves food after we transitioned and it was food that we felt like people would love. And so then they gave me the label chef and I said, okay, I'll take it. I don't even know how to hold a knife right, but I'm a chef. No, your, your food's great. You, you did a couple of uh, healthy taste of LA events for us where you were making the food and people just love your food. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And I know you're going to make something for us today, too. I it am. sounds amazing. I am. And this is really simple. A AJ slapped my hands on yesterday because when I first made this soup, of course, I made it in the restaurant and I made a roux out of flour, old school, regular old roux out of flour, a little um, olive oil. And AJ was like, oh, uh -uh. you ain't bringing all this oil up here on my show. So I was like, OK, AJ, we're going to. <laughs> My family was so tickled when they saw your text. They were like, wow, mom, she got you. I'm like, okay, all right. So this is what we're going to do. We took out all of the roux, all of the oil, and um, per AJ. And so I have a, a my, my husband just bought this little Blendtec. I usually use, you know, Vitamix. So hopefully this Blendtec works. And I'm going to... Um, can I do it? Can I go ahead and? Yeah, absolutely. Demo? Zoom seems to have a feature where we don't hear it. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, it you just seems that way. Up? Yeah, oh. it, I don't know. I, have you guys noticed any sounds of the equipment? Because I've noticed that wow. they seem to mute it. Okay, so basically, I'm going to have to adjust my iPad so that maybe you guys can see all the ingredients or not. What I'll do is just hold them up and pour them in. That may be easier. So I've got two cups of milk in here. And... This in this container is Kirkland's no salt seasoning. Now I love no salt seasoning. I get it from Whole Foods and it's not Whole Foods, I'm sorry, from Costco and it's organic. I decided, I didn't put this on the recipe, but I decided to get some of the sea kelp and drop in here. So we're gonna put a little, about a teaspoon of sea kelp. I've got some yellow miso a tablespoon of milk, yellow miso. And these are my soaked cashews. Now, most of us know why we soak our nuts. We soak our nuts because they have uh, enzyme inhibitors and they become very difficult to digest if you don't soak them to rid them of the inhibitors. I am going to go and pour the water off of this and I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, Hope says she loves Kirkland's no salt seasoning. I know Mary McDougall mentions that one as well. I'm allergic to black pepper, so I can't have it. So I get a brand called Benson's Table Tasty, and hopefully I'll get Debbie Benson to come on the show. Let me read some nice comments for you. For okay. As, as, uh, I heard a really nice comment. On, here it is. Um, I had the privilege of meeting Chef Babette and taking a picture with her at the SLO Veg Fest a couple of years ago. What? An amazing inspiration. Her name is popping up, or his name is Facebook user. Some Sometimes uh, the actual name of the person isn't, oh, revealed, but nice. somebody knows you. Well, hello. And Floor okay. says, "I love you, Chef Babette." I love you, Bat. These are the these are the oyster mushrooms. So I've got like two cups. I'm gonna dump these in with the cashews and um, blend this up. So hopefully you guys will not hear it. This is such a simple soup. And can I tell you, when I make this, um, this um, what's this stuff called? That's what happens when you turn 70. I need some. Uh, uh, the, um, uh, I, I need something. I need creamy, something. Creamy shiitake mushroom soup. And yeah, well, what, what, that, that's not what I was trying to remember, though. Hold on a second. Okay. And uh, Aunt Jackie, yes, those are raw nuts, but she mentioned that she soaks them to remove the enzyme inhibitor. And the miso is not being used as a thickener. She's using it because miso does have salt. So it's giving a nice salty flavor. And, and Tiffany, the, re the recipe is always in the show notes. If you don't see it now, go to actual YouTube. And what the show notes means is an upside down triangle where you click more. And that's where her bio and the recipe is. And they, they, and it's always there. Do you hear it? Not too much. It's not very loud. So go ahead. And we don't hear it at all now. Cynthia, I don't know how many cashews that there is, but it's in the recipe, which is in the show notes. I'm guessing a few cups. I don't want to jump screens when, when I'm doing the live to go look it up, but I promise you it's there. Oh, I love this. If you don't like me, try stuff I eat. Yeah, that's very cool. I never heard that, Lisa. If you don't like me, try stuff I eat. 
Yeah, her restaurant's really a lot of fun. If you ever get to that area. Ah, thank you, Jesse. It's three cups soaked cashews. And I would imagine if you're trying to lower the fat, use some white beans, either for all or some of the cashews. I'll ask her that question, Jen Jennifer, about the enzyme inhibitor. Um, you're, you're, you're right, though, that soaking the nuts makes it does make it blend softer for sure. It's always a good okay, idea. Okay, so we're blended. Yeah, now, couple of uh, uh, Babette, a couple of questions came by yeah. while you were blending. Uh, yes. It, it, Jennifer says, can you please talk more about enzyme inhibitors? I thought soaking just made nuts softer so they blend easier. Oh, no. Nuts can be extremely difficult to digest. And so once I learned, especially I use the cashew nuts so much, I learned about the, the inhibitors. I, I, it was like, oh, my God, I had no idea why every time I ate nuts, I had such a difficult time digesting them. I have an issue with digestion anyway, but I had absolutely no clue that the nuts had these inhibitors. And, and, and once you soak them, it kind of releases the enzymes, the enzymes we need. Uh, and, and enzymes help us digest our food. So that is the main purpose, the real purpose for soaking the nuts. And then you want to rinse them well and make sure that you, you know, and I soak the cashews. I soak the cashews for what? about three, two, three hours, something like that, no big deal. Some nuts you wanna soak overnight, but the cashew nut, my nut, um, I, that, that's what I do. Now, I'm not a scientist, that's about as much as I know about soaking the nuts, And but you, you know what? We have Google nowadays, and all you have to do is key in, why do I need to soak my nuts? And Google will give you uh, probably a better answer than I've just given you, but uh, yeah, it's important. So, so, so it. Jennifer says all nuts need to be soaked, right? Every all kind. Be, I, as far as I know, all nuts need to be soaked, all of them. Uh, now, what I do if, say, for instance, I want my nut dry, I I will use a dehydrator, and and put them in the dehydrator and just kind of cool them off a little bit uh, if they're just way too soft because of the soaking. Because sometimes you want to crunch in your nut. Um, or you can just put them in the freezer and just let them hang out until you're ready to use them. So obviously they're gonna be dry there, um, but it is important to soak them. So I've already blended the, the, um, the oyster mushrooms with the cashews. And what I'm going, this bowl right here contains, I decided to use some of the seaweed in this bowl right here. Can you see it? Can you see it, AJ? Absolutely. Okay. So I've got several different types of mushrooms in here. I've got re regular uh, criminy. I've got the uh, oyster mushrooms and I've got shiitake mushrooms along with the um, seaweed. Now I'm going to pour this beautiful mixture because normally you would have a pot and you would take your mushrooms, put them in this uh, mixture and heat it up. But for the sake of us just seeing how beautiful this is, I'm just gonna put it in the bowl right now and I can heat all this stuff up later. Now you can always use a little Bragg's if you need a little, a little more uh, of the um, Bragg's or sea salt, but I don't like things way salty, so, um, like I said, you can use a teaspoon of Bragg's, whatever you need, but, but salt to taste. Let's see. Yeah, Excalibur is a very good brand. That's what I have, the nine tray. Don't ever get a five tray because you won't have room to do anything. Mm. Actually, this is so creamy. This is so thick and creamy right now. I could actually use a little bit more milk. So when you're when you're making your chowder, adjust the thickness. If it if it comes off a little bit thick to you, go ahead and add a little bit more milk uh, uh, to 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 the mixture. And then you want to put it in a pot and you want to lightly heat this and garnish it, and you're good to go. That's how simple this recipe is. Let me just explain to you, simple is all, always works best for me. Um, I don't have a, a bunch of knowledge about tons and tons of product and everything. So 
I decided that I was going to make sure that whatever I made, it would be simple. All of my dishes are so darn easy. I don't go through a big change. I was happy that AJ told me take the oil and the roux out. Do you see how fast I made this? I made it so quick, I felt like I cheated you guys out of a demo. But that's the way you want it because a lot of times if it gets it too intense and there's too many steps, we're not gonna do it. And so we fail, you know what I mean? So I figure quick, simple, easy, as few ingredients as possible to make it happen and make sure that it tastes good. Let me just see if it tastes good. Oh my gosh. You were right about the miso. I didn't even put any brags in this, AJ. And the miso gave it all of the um, sodium it needed. You were 100% nice. right. Yeah. So that's it, you guys. That's how quick it is. But go get you some mushrooms. Get you some seaweed, little sea kelp, cashews, soak them, and go to work. Make yourself a so chowder. If somebody did have a nut allergy, they're uh, suggesting maybe either steamed cauliflower or white cauliflower. beans. There you go. You talked to me about the cauliflower on yesterday. Now, of course, I've made chowders out of uh, out of potatoes and things like that. But I'm going to try the uh, cauliflower. I have not done that one, AJ. Yeah, I've done that a lot in recipes using steamed cauliflower in place of nuts. And it's actually very, very good. There's wow. a question if somebody, if they're... Um, trying to find it but can you you can't really use roasted nuts right because they don't cream no. up well yes they will cream up oh they will okay yeah they will the reason i like raw is because of the life in them if if i can get them raw i would rather them not be cooked it's just it's just where i am you would know. you still have to soak them if they were roasted i still soak them nice i still okay. soak them to soften them up but definitely I if you have to use the roasted use the roasted it will work Nice. Steve says, is there anywhere we can find your fantastic carrot untuna recipe? Uh, you know what? I posted that carrot untuna recipe and it's posted on the Stuff I Eat Instagram page. I posted that recipe. Somebody else asked me for that recipe. So go to the Stuff I Eat Instagram page, thumb through, and you will find the recipe for the carrot untuna. As a matter of fact, I'm going to look to see because I think there's a picture of the carrot untuna on it and the recipe is right there for all of you instagrammers let's see stuff i eat found it you found it yay it's april Good. 16th it's the april cool. 6 it's uh april 16th april 15th post thank you sweetie well that's it's it I'm not seeing the recipe. I'm seeing a picture, though. Well, flip it. Just uh, go, slide it over. <gasps> You're right. It's there, guys. It's really there on the stuff. You. Oh my God. It's great. Carrot and carrot pulp and green onion. Carrot. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. And it really is there. So you'd have to go. Uh, it, and there's an underscore before Ingle. So I, I'm going to put the, her Instagram. It's at. Let me get it correctly. Oh, there we go. It's at. Stuff I eat, and then it's underscore Inglewood, I N G. And go to April 15th, and that recipe is there. You ask, thank you, AJ. We, thank yep, you for finding that. You so ask, quickly. and we deliver. Yeah, there Julie, no, she didn't. She didn't cook the mushroom, she didn't cook anything in the soup. I haven't cooked like, anything. As a matter of fact, see, I could eat this like it is, but most of us want a warm chowder. So you stick it in a pot, heat it up a little bit, you're good to go. You're going to be like, oh, chef, thanks. Cool. Louis says, Chef Babette, does your restaurant have outdoor seating now or is it only for order? You know, we're still just locked down pretty much as takeout pretty much only. You know, we're, we're a smaller outside has never been great for it. We've never set it up, never set it up outside. And um, it, we just right now, we're just like in a dilemma. We're, we're, we're like, what are we going to do? How are we going to go forward with this? But we've got to wait until California knows what it's going to do. And then we, because we're kind of thinking about changing it up a little bit, not having it like, because we had big, huge wooden tables. Uh, everybody could sit and dine together. We're getting rid of all of that. And we're about to have an empty shell in a minute. Change the coloring in it and just do something different. 
Nice. Does does yeah. the one Michael Beckwith still frequent your restaurant? He comes in every now and then. I miss I I, I miss Michael Beckwith. I miss all of them actually. I miss everybody. You know what I do, AJ? I go in at four o'clock in the morning and I do my prep. And by noon, because we don't open till three now, we're closed Mondays and Tuesdays now, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, three to seven. And then Saturday and Sunday are normal hours, 12 to six. Um, I'm usually out of there before the staff comes in. So I, I, it's my hands on the food. So if there's anything wrong with it, it's my fault. But um, yeah, because I am 70 and COVID was so strange, I just thought I, I'll go in, I'll do everything I need to do and go home before anybody shows up. So that's what I've been doing since this all started. Nice. Steph says, I cannot believe she's 70 years old. Amazing. Uh -huh. And Mar uh, uh, Brenda says, are there substitutes for mushrooms for those of us with mushroom allergies? What? You know, there's so many allergies. What is that? Yeah, I know. It's, it didn't used to be like this. I wonder if it's the pesticides or, or something, you know, that, that's on the food. It's, you're people right. People coming in allergic to bell pepper. Somebody came in and said they're allergic to parsley. And I'm just like, really, these items? I, you know what? Because of my limited knowledge, AJ, do, AJ, do you have an idea on what a person can use in the place? If, if it's an oyster mushroom chowder, what can you well, use well, in the that, place of mushrooms? I know. I mean, mushroom is so. Could you guys watching have any ideas? What could you substitute for a mushroom? What could you substitute? That is a. For that a is really a tough one. You know, and or there's when, so many mushrooms. It's like you know what I mean. If you were asking me, well, I'm allergic to shiitake or oyster, but just mushrooms, I don't know. Yeah, and I, I know just, it's one of those things that Dr. Furman talks about about being superfoods, and he wants you to eat them every day. I have. I don't know a substitute. M mushrooms have a very umami flavor, and so yes, they do. Um, I, I, I have know. no idea, but you know what? It's something to play around with. It oh, really is. is. Well, we just so said she loves the simplicity. And uh, there was a question here from Tiffany about what your favorite, and guys, the rest, the recipe is already posted. Tiffany says, what's your favorite meal to make? Oh, my favorite meal to make. You know what? One of the meals that I make uh, that, that's a huge seller at Stuff I Eat I enjoy making this because, and you know it too, I think I've made it with you, um, AJ, uh, it's the enchilada pie. The enchilada pie is delicious. It's a huge, it's one of, it's, it's up there with the burgers and the soul food platter. Some days people don't want anything but the enchilada pie and soul food. That's how popular it is. And it is delicious, but so simple to make and so clean because you don't need oils, you don't need, uh, you know what, I use tomato paste, I use um, Mexican seasoning, I use zucchini, green onion, bell pepper, and um, polenta with corn tortillas, and a little uh, vegan cheese, and man, you layer that, and you've got yourself a massive treat. And if I have that recipe anywhere, um, AJ, I'll, I'll send it, I'll shoot it to you. That is my, that's one of the favorite items that, uh, dishes that I make at Stuff I Eat, the enchilada pie. Oh, and, and to be perfectly honest with you, you guys, um, I'm not, like some people just hang out in the kitchen because they're just like, I just love it. No, that's not chef. I don't just love hanging out in the kitchen, maybe because I have to do it every day for so many hours, but that is why easy is, is what I have to have. I can't, I don't give me anything that makes me go through a change to make it because I'm not going to be happy. So all of my dishes are easy, but yeah, the enchilada pie, that's a favorite for me. I love it. Well, maybe you'll come back and show us how to make it sometime. I would love to. Would you like for me to do that? Uh, yeah, you bet we would. Are you kidding? Oh that Look, would be it's so simple. And for those people that come in the stuff I eat that love the enchilada pie, you'll be tripping. You'll be like, is that it? Yes. I'd love uh, to do that. That's I'd amazing. Elizabeth says, I've eaten at your restaurant many times. We love it and love you. So is the slogan of the restaurant, if you don't eat meat, try stuff I eat? Oh, check this out. 
my, my husband wrote this song. It goes, stuff I eat, stuff I eat. If you don't want me, try the stuff I eat. 114 North Market Street in Inglewood, California. Don't you love it? I <laughs> think you are. You are so adorable. <laughs> Dina says you have beautiful skin. Did you always have beautiful skin? No. Or do you have a secret? Do you have a secret? One of the reasons I became vegan, my skin, I had eczema everywhere, everywhere. As a matter of fact, I was one of those people that I was hooked on Lidex ointment. It was going to really ruin me because every single month I broke out with a real thick rash in my face. My back had so many horrible zits on it. And that was from refined sugar. Um, specifically, my back had so many zits, I could not wear anything backwards. Now you can't keep me out of backless stuff. But yeah, it was it was just my diet. It was my diet. And now I, of course, I exfoliate. I pretty much use coconut oil on my skin everywhere. It's my favorite. And um, it's it's just my lifestyle. It all cleared up. Everything went away. Asthma went away. Earaches went away. Bad skin went away. Yeah. It were, you all a, were you able to influence any family members to be as You know, healthy? isn't that incredible? Right now, I can, I think I can count on one hand the people that have actually transitioned. My son, Brooke Davis, he transitioned. He was hooked on the cheese and he got really, really sick, wound up in the hospital. And he was like, okay, I'm done. Has not had an episode since he got off the dairy. Um, my daughter now, uh, has now transitioned and is now vegan, but she had to go through a change. She wound up with diabetes. She wound up with a few illnesses before she finally said, okay, I'm done. I mean, is that too? I'm trying to, I'm trying to but, think. But you, obviously moment. you didn't raise your, your daughter vegan because you weren't even vegan until you were 40. No, I didn't. I, I, I did some horrible things out of ignorance with my daughter. When my daughter was a baby, AJ, let me tell you one of the ignorant things I did, but it was what we were doing back then. She couldn't talk. I would not breastfeed her. That's how ignorant I was. I was in a really limited space consciously, but I wouldn't breastfeed her. So I wanted to give her the Similac. Well, she couldn't tolerate the Similac. And guess what my mother had me mixing up for her? Pet milk in a can with Carol syrup. Oh my God. That's what I fed my daughter. My daughter started having weight issues early. Um, yeah, and so she still struggles with that today. I didn't start her off very good. You don't <laughs> feed your child pet milk in a can with sugar. And then, and plus, I was full of milk for her. I was full of food. But due to my ignorance, I would not... So mm -hmm. that, that's something that I try to tell young, young mothers, you know what, you have the food that your child is supposed to eat, <laughs> nourish your child properly. And when it, be, when it has teeth, then it can chew and tear. But until then, don't give it somebody else's milk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, and sugar. That is so. great. A couple of people are suggesting perhaps eggplant for a meaty texture for people that can't have mushrooms. That works. Who is that that said that? A couple Thank of people, you. Flatlander and one other, and uh, yeah, Elisa, they suggested that. I am that. gonna try that. And I will, I'm gonna send you a text. I know you're uh, gonna try it too. I'm gonna check that out with the eggplant. Thank you. Yep, yep. That's why we have such a great community. Let's yes. see, Margie says, what kind of soap do you use? Um, I'll go get it right now. Yeah. I use guys, I mean, not that you, I mean, when you say you, I don't know if you asked me or her, but I use, I don't use soap. I use from the body deli, the blueberry, I think it's called blueberry fusion scrub. And I did an episode with them and that's what I use. And it's very nice. And it smells okay. like you have blueberry pie on your face. I'm a Dr. Bronner's girl and black soap. So those are the two. <laughs> if I'm using any soap, that's what I'm using. Yeah. Is yeah. your husband home? I've never seen him. You've never seen Ron? No, I've never have. <laughs> oh, but bet you've done it. You just keep him out of the way, don't you, girl? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is he real or is it like that? Is it like Cheers where we never saw the, the you know, Vera? I mean, you it, saw it, Ron when you came into the restaurant with your husband. Are you sure? I don't. If he's there, have him say hello. I'd love to know what. Uh... He's not here. 
Oh, okay. No, he's not here. He's over at the restaurant doing whatever he's doing. Right. But <laughs> AJ, you are somewhere. Hey, you know, we could do this, honestly, especially now that you're telling me that you're at the restaurant before it's even open. Yeah. We could we could do this when you make the enchilada pie. We could do it from the restaurant. We can actually, we certainly can. We could do it from the restaurant. And what I can do is just show you how I'm layering everything up. It would be simpler. And it'll be one of the days that I need to make enchilada pie, which is every day. So well, then you, you, yeah, you just tell me, because if I, if I have the regular slot filled, we'll just do it earlier or whenever, whenever you want, you know, just text me and boom. What's, I will. The, what's the best seller at the restaurant? Oh, honey. First, we have the soul food platter is, I would say, probably number one. Enchilada pie would be number two. The burgers. We make our own burgers. Now we do, we make our burgers out of uh, mushrooms. So that person allergic to mushrooms, maybe I better try some eggplant just in case. Um, so we make the burgers out of um, uh, walnuts and mushrooms and rice and get it all mixed up there together. We make our patties and it's, they're amazing. They're amazing. And I prefer to make my own patties just because I know what I put in them. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Any celebrities ever come into the restaurant? Well, we do have a few celebrities that bop in every now and then. Um, and like I said, it, it used to be more before COVID, obviously. Uh, but um, yeah, some. some. Any, any names you can share? If that, uh, like, uh... Uh, who's been in there? Let's see. We've had, of course, John Sally's everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Um, what's her name? Uh, Kimberly Elise. Um, it's been a few of them. I forget these people's names. I'm sorry, Jane. It's been a few of them, but... I can't remember everybody that's been in there. You know, your girl, um, she played in Roots. What's her name? Cicely Tyson. He's been in, oh, she's great. She's been in a few times. Yeah, she's Miss Tyson. I remember my son one day said, are you guys ready? And she said, there are no guys sitting at this table. We are all ladies. Oh, he was like, God. I am so sorry. She checked him right quick. <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> that is so cool. That, well, obviously you can't travel right now, but like, were you? Did you have a lot of speaking engagements lined up at conferences and veg fest? Well, I had a few. Like um, you know, the one that I, I I hate I'm missing is the one that I was going to go to Jamaica. I love Jamaica, and that one obviously is canceled. But um, you know, timing is everything. Sometimes you're supposed to travel. Sometimes you're not. Absolutely. And I'm good with it. What are you? Are you traveling? Are no, I haven't been anywhere since November. I mean, no, I just haven't had, I had a lot of jobs this year, but everything's canceled for the rest of the year. For the rest of the year. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Bo Bonnie says John Sally just opened up a vegan cafe at San, Ber San Bernardino. I I've been oh, texting him, but yeah, San Bernardino. what's it called? Cause I've been texting him for months. He never gets back to me to see if he wants to be on the oh, show. Oh man, he sent me I can, if you have a second, I can yeah. find the name of that place Yeah, that, because that's... I told him I was so happy and proud of him for opening that. I told him I would definitely share it. Uh, John Sally, let's see. Leah says, Leah. I want to grow up to be Chef Babette. Absolutely. Who wants to grow up to be me? Leah it's called says Cafe that? Organics. Nice. I'm going to write Cafe that down. Cafe Organics. They just had the grand opening. How nice. In San Bernardino. Yep. Yeah. Uh, John Sally is a very famous NBA basketball player and he's vegan and he's awesome. And I've been trying to get him on the show for months, but he doesn't answer me. What? You want he, John Sally on? I, I'd love him. He doesn't answer my text. Maybe I'll try email, but I, I know he knows me because I've done a cooking class for him once. But so. Come on now. I'm going to yeah. be like John. You got to get a girl. Come on. That's yeah, my you, friend. You got to give him that. an interview. He's I probably know. just super busy. Super, I know. I'm, I'm sure he is. I'm sure. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is. Because he would definitely give you an interview. But I'm going to hit him up, too, and tell him, look, we got folks that want to see you on the show. Absolutely. He can talk yeah. about his restaurant because I honestly, until until she posted, I didn't know about his restaurant at all. You know who else is a very interesting uh, chef? Um, she's over in Belize. I just interviewed her on Sunday on, on my show, Sunday Bites and Tidbits. And it's uh, do you do you remember Chef India Camille? I don't, but she sounds amazing. Oh well, she... my gosh. You look, look her up on Instagram back to live by Chef India. 
she is she is a phenom when it comes to raw food aj this woman and we started together but she's like i say she's been to the moon and back with it very interesting and very knowledgeable you know i should um ask her and also ask you you know you know dr doug graham he, he has this new thing where he has this raw cooking show and I, you know i'm not raw i mean i went to raw culinary right. school but uh, he's right. still having me as a guest doing four or five raw recipes. He does this thing Sunday mornings at nine. I should oh. introduce you to the person because yeah. you could do it and she could do it as well. Oh yeah. If, and, I, and I still do my raw things. I make the best raw kale chips of anybody on the planet. My, my kale chips are amazing. But anyway, um, India is somebody that you really, really, really need to know. She is just, and she's true to it, AJ. When I met this kid, she, she was eating some of everything. And now she is like one of the cleanest people I know. Seriously, seriously. She really cleaned it up. So there's a question uh, from Gina. Babette has a show. Tell us about it. Yeah, the show is called Sunday Bites and Tidbits. It's under um, Jane Unchained News. And um, what we do is we introduce, we just try to find vegans and wherever we can find a vegan. Now we started our first couple of months because um, the black, the African-American community has been labeled one of the fastest growing communities to become or transition to veganism. And so we decided to reach out to um, some of our black vegans. We got a lot of vegans in our community, a lot of vegans, and there's all of their stories are different and the contributions that they're making to the whole, is just something that we really, this, we really wanted to share. And it's just an exciting show for us. Um, we're getting ready to have a badass vegan on. And have you had him on your show, AJ? No, but I know him and I love him. So I'm going to have to contact him. Please. Thanks for the great suggestion. Yeah, yeah. Dom Thompson, we've had um, Plant-Based G. He's brand new, but he's awesome. Just wrote a, a brand new book. So there's so many people joining the community. Um, so we feel like the show is just informative, fun, and uh, um, yeah, informative and fun. Have you seen the, the movie The Invisible Vegan? Of course, I was I was part of that invisible. I was in there. She right. had me in there. Right. I haven't seen it yet. It's in the queue, but I'm going to be interviewing Jasmine in. in a I'm going to interview so. her too. I'm so excited, Leva. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I'm going to interview her too. So that this is this is what I love about this. It's like it, what whatever whatever people need to know to have these platforms and to be able to answer questions. It's just vital, you know, because our planet is suffering and we need everybody. We need everybody to stop, to just stop because we'll never get rid of the um, factory farming and uh, the way that we're handling animals if we, if, if we don't transition. We got to stop buying the product. And so, you know, what we're doing is important. AJ is very absolutely. Important. They're asking if you can pr uh, please uh, repeat Chef Inda Inda's Instagram. Oh, it's a uh, back to live by Chef India. Thank you. Back to live, and right now she's got all kind of stuff going on. You guys just check her out. Check her out, please. You'll be happy you did. So tell us a little bit about your day. I know that you have to get up early for the restaurant. I'm assuming you work almost every day, but do you have a routine, like a, a fitness routine or like what do you eat in a day, yeah. for example? Now, generally when, when, when I get up, I usually get up around between two and 2.30. Um, I'm back with my trainer again. So I'm back with the trainer. Uh, when I was here by myself, before I went to work, I get a little workout in, but I never push myself as hard as my trainer pushes me. So I really, I'm one of those people that I kind of slug out when I'm by myself, but um, I, I, I never stop when I'm with a trainer, I'll go hard. So I, I, I get, to, I usually get to work between four and 4.30. The first thing I try to do, let me show you AJ, this is what I do. 
We're getting all the secrets now, guys. Thank you for your great questions. Don't forget to come back at one today. I have cannot a second. live without juice. Um, it's the chlorophyll that I receive every single day. And I drink about two of these generally. And if I usually bring an extra one home, so <laughs> if I don't want to do any silly snacking, I'll just go ahead and pick up some more green juice. Now this green juice happens to be kale. It's uh, green apples, um, ginger, and lemon. You can use lemon or lime if you're not a lemon person. Then I start, I'm usually left aboard with everything that has to be prepped. And believe it or not, we have been so busy lately <laughs> that it seems like every day I'm prepping the same thing over and over and over again. So then I go through my routine. I, I, I leave work between 12 and 1, and uh, I actually come home and chill out. I chill out for about a couple hours. And um, then the rest of the day is mine. So lately I've been going to the gym in the afternoon. And so whenever my trainer has time, we'll get together since the gym is back open and we'll go and we'll work out. And then, like I said, the rest of the evening is mine. It's a pretty simple day for me. I don't do a whole bunch because work is enough, trust me. Being do there you, from four in the morning till noon. So what time do you have to go to bed? Yeah, I am an old lady. I, I will I can actually go to sleep at seven and sleep till two. I can actually do that. I try to stay awake a little bit longer, but I'm big on getting my rest. I don't have a I, I'm not I, I've never had a, a, a nightlife. I've never been that girl. I did, I, I never was her. Um, but I do work out hard. I love being out of doors, working out. And um, I, I love getting my rest. So that's pretty much, I know, not very exciting, huh? What do you do for, what do you do for fun? Uh, let's see, what do I do for fun? I have fun all the time because I make my own fun. But all of that stuff is fun, except for 10 hours standing on my feet in the kitchen. Oh, but my God. do you ever have a chance to go on vacation or anything? You know, before COVID, yes, Ron, Ron is pretty supportive because I've had an opportunity to go to uh, Kenya and stay for about a week. I mean, it was it was a customer, customers that came into the restaurant. They were getting ready to go to Kenya. And I was like, I want to go. And they said, go with us. And I went to my husband and I said, I want to go to Kenya with them. And he said, okay, send me to Kenya. Let me tell you how wonderful these people were to me. I took, I, I spent all of $300 in Kenya. I was there for about a week. These people cared for me. They took me to their home. They have a couple of homes, but they fed me and they cared for me. I was just part of the family. I spent all of $300 and that was for souvenirs. Then Tara and I went to Italy. We went to, um, yeah, we've been all over the place. So yeah, I love traveling. And that's why I said I was, I was heartbroken that I was not gonna be able to make this trip to Jamaica. So since COVID has put a little damp, you know, I don't do a lot in LA. I don't, I work out, I go to work and you know, talk to you when you want to talk to me. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> well, people definitely want you to come back and, and show the enchilada pie. And yes, gonna, they keep, that'll be fun. Keep you talking guys. about your, your kale chips as well. You know, honey, these kale chips. I don't know if I, I I'm thinking about packaging these kale chips really and true. I don't know if I'm gonna give that recipe away. I, I that, let me tell you my kale chips. Ooh, everybody says it. Everybody that tastes them, they say, I've never tasted kale chips this good you weren't you at docs when i made kale chips before maybe you weren't there that time i don't think so no oh because i made kale chips for dr montgomery have you talking have you spoken to doc you know i had him on the show um I, but, you did? but yeah yeah i did and i had terry mason on too they were one of the oh, first yeah, yeah. i miss him so much yeah he, he's great uh zena wants to know if your husband eats like you oh my husband is woo. 
my husband is worse. He's something else. He's, he's very, very, very strict, very, very strict. And he's real ethical because Ron is, I, I can remember when we first started, um, there was something that I, I couldn't find organic and I was just going to go ahead and get, you know, just regular. And he said, but aren't we selling this as an organic product? I said, yes. He said, then let me go find organic. I'm not getting ready to tell people I'm giving them organic and I'm not. And that, that kind of set the stage for us. Whatever it is we tell you we're giving you is exactly what we're giving you. And I, I would have slipped one on you. I'm, I'm, I'm being perfectly honest, but my husband was like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. If I say it's this, it has to be that, or I'm not selling it, period. So I like his ethics. And, 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 and so we adapted that in our business. So yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's very strict, very, very strict. Well, maybe he'll have to come on the show and talk about his journey then. Yes, may, you may. Why not? Hey, he, he would probably enjoy that. Especially if, we, especially if you guys broadcast from the restaurant, maybe he'll already be there. Right, and, and Rondell is who helped me transition, AJ. Uh, and Rondell wasn't vegan at the time, but Rondell's a talker, great, great person to have on the show. Uh, and uh, he just knew a lot. And when I just decided, okay, well then I'm gonna go vegan. He said, okay, thanks. I guess I'm going to go vegan too. And that's been, you know, since we met 30 years now. That's amazing. Yeah. Sweet yeah. Potato Sister who lives in LA says she's definitely going to- Sweet gonna... Potato Sister. Isn't that a great name? Yeah, I she- love that name. <laughs> Isn't that great? She's definitely going to come to your restaurant and put it on her vlog. And Susanna, yes, uh, carrot pulp is called for the untuna recipe. If you yes. guys go to Instagram, if the reason you're not seeing the recipe is you have to swipe Swipe left when yeah, you see you the picture, but I promise you the recipe is there. People but are make asking, sure you you peel your carrots. We don't we don't juice dirty carrots, so every carrot is peeled. Yeah, and guess what? If you don't have carrot pulp, it's a little bit mushier, but you can use yams. Nice, nice. Yes, Pe if people are asking yams. if you make your own juice or do you just go pick it up? Baby, you see this? This is me, honey. I make my own. I know exactly what's in there. I know exactly how much is in there. And I mm, can't live without it. You know what you guys, this this is life here. If you can't get if you can't get the chlorophyll, if you can't get the nutrients by anything that you're chomping down on, put it in this liquid and it will feed your cells almost instantly. I find and I, when I do drink green juice, I, it just it makes me not hungry. Like I just don't want to eat it. There's you something... are so spot on. Yes, that's exact. It it sends the message to the brain. Cells are fed, baby. You're not even hungry. It's so true, AJ. So true. Listen to her. She knows what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank. How how long do you your care your kale chips have to stay in the dehydrator? You know what? I haven't made kale chips in a in a while. But guess what? They stay in there long enough to get nice and crispy. Some hours, yeah. some hours. You get you're making me want to make some kale chips. Oh, I, I make them. I, make I you know I have I, I make a recipe. I have a recipe in my book, and I make them quite a bit because my husband loves them, and they're they're great as snacks. And like you can crumble them on salads, you can Aren't sprinkle them wonderful? on soups. Yeah, yes. I mean, and then it's like it's like they're they're fantastic. I do they love are. them. Yeah, they are. And here I am telling a chef, I make the best kale chips on the planet. No, but you probably do. I mean, I just, you know, because I tend to eat things a little bit lower in fat, so mine aren't the best, but they, they're still crunchy and they're still yummy. You're, you're so funny. You're so funny. When you said, when I sent you that recipe, yeah. you guys, <laughs> when I sent AJ this recipe, and look, my recipe only had one quarter cup of oil for this room. Let me tell you, this one was like, oh, honey, mm, oh, I knew that's she was like, oh, no, uh -uh, that's too much oil. That was so funny. Well, you know, I've got, I've got Dr. Russelson coming on in a couple of days. And I'm like, I, in case he watches the show, he's like, what are you yes. having me on this show for? You know, so everybody wants to know how, how you make it. Um, the Queen of the Aries wants to know how you make your soup. Don't we have great names here? Sweet Potato Sister, Queen of the Aries. I know Queen Mansion. of the Aries. How I make what? Your juice. Like what? what's oh, your. OK, so. I um when when I'm prepping my kale, um, 
there, there are certain stems that, that um, have kale on it that I, 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 I'm not going to add to, to my pot of cooked kale. So I basically, <laughs> the kale that I'm cooking for greens, I, I share that kale with my juice. I have to have it. It's either kale or it's cilantro. And let me tell you, if you decide on the cilantro, get you about three bunches of cilantro, wash them real good. Um, and what do I have? Lemon juice in there. I use usually because I'm I'm juicing for more than myself. My husband and I usually we have a couple of these jars uh, together, and so so the lemons, the um, uh, 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 oh, what is that? Apples, apples, green apples give you the juice that you need, so that when you're blending all this stuff together, it, it comes out perfectly it, it's the, the sweetness I mean uh, it gives you the sweetness that you need now if, if you shouldn't be doing too much sugar um, then you cut back a little bit on the apple but I like my drinks palatable I'm not hardcore I'm not the, I'm not the girl that can drink the juice and it tastes like wheatgrass that's not me I want a little sweetness in it so um, this morning I think I had about eight apples. I had, um, this one is made with the kale. So it would have been equivalent to like two bunches of kale. Um, I had two lemons and tons of ginger because I like it hot. So that's pretty much what I put in this drink. And, and um, what, what kind of juicer do you use? I use the, the big, um, oh, it's in a big industrial juicer. Is it the, the Nor is it by any chance the Norwalk juicer or it, no? We no, we didn't get the Norwalk. It's the other one. You, it, I know you know this juicer. Everybody I can't think has. of the name. It's probably the one they use at True North. Everybody maybe, uses yeah. this juicer. Yeah, yeah, but it's right. industrial juicer. Nice. There's a question. What kind of kale is best for making kale chips? Now, I like curly kale. I like curl. I don't. I don't use the lacinato. I like the curly curly kale and that's what I use to make my chips. I don't use stems in the chips obviously it's weird so I de-stem it yep. and uh, yeah. Jane says, how do you make kale chips without a dehydrator? I'll let Babette take that as well. But I find it's not that you can't Jane, but the oven just doesn't go as low as a dehydrator. It doesn't always, go as low. And they, I, they always come out real like kind of dry. They just don't come out I'm right gonna, when I've tried gonna, it. What she said, I yep. always use a dehydrator. Thank I you. always use a dehydrator. Guess who just pinged me on Instagram is Chef India. She's going to thank you for the suggestion. She's going to come on the show. Oh my gosh. Yes. That yeah. is wonderful. Absolutely. You love her. You love her, AJ. You love That's her. great. Well, anybody yeah. recommended by you is going to be great. Guys, I can't post an Instagram recipe here. I just, I don't have the technology if you can't see it on Instagram, but I swear it's there. If you just go what, to the, the, uh, um, the carrot, the carrot, the carrot tuna. Carrot. Yeah. I well, just tell, well, well, this is what I'll do, sweetie. I'll send it. I'll send it to you. How's that? That's great. Send, and so I'll guys, it I, so it will be posted. It's just not going to be an immediate thing. So check back in the show notes, but thank, thank you for right. doing that chef. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Uh, Dina says, what do you do with the leftover fiber? Do you make crackers, throw it out, put it in a smoothie or a soup from the juicing? From the juicing. Um, I have a friend that usually picks up all of our um, pulp, all of our, all of that stuff, all the fiber. Uh, they have a garden. And so they, they come by period, I mean, once or twice a week and we just keep it for them and they take it away. Um, usually the only time I'm using the fiber is if I am um, making the carrot on tuna. What's the other? I will use beet fiber. Yeah, I will use beet fiber and yam fiber. But other than that, most everything else is being hauled off for uh, somebody's garden. That's cool. So you can't yeah. post it. Okay, yeah. one more time. Her Instagram is is stuff I eat underscore Inglewood. I'll post it again. You got to have that underscore though. You do you have one for yourself, Chef Babette? Yeah, Chef Babette. Okay, great. Well, that's pretty easy. Yeah. 
Nice. Okay. Well, this has been so much fun. Guys, she's coming back. We're going to do it from the restaurant. We'll be able to see her husband. We'll see the enchilada pie. <laughs> and um, this will be great. That's the problem with her recipes. They're so easy. You're done in a second. I know. That, I'm sorry, y'all. Real quick. That's but okay. guess what I'm, I'm having for lunch? The cream of mushroom soup. Cream yes. of shiitake. That's so and thanks great. for the uh, uh, eggplant. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's a great that idea. Out. That's a great yeah, idea. So check out a book. Idea. If you're, if you're in LA, check out, Oh, uh, G genius says I Googled chef Babette on tuna recipe and she found a video. So that's even better. Fabulous. Yeah. I and everybody's you saying you should sell your see? kale chips, even though they haven't tasted them yet. Everybody's saying sell those kale chips. Oh honey, my kale chips. Ooh, I probably, I'd probably be rich just off the kale chips. AJ, AJ, well, you're I, so cute. Thanks for having me on the show. This my pleasure. So you were one of the what, you were one of the first people I asked. We we yeah, like I said, you were worth the wait. So oh. guys, thank you so much for being here today. We have two shows because it's the first Tuesday of the month. When I we have Tuesdays with Thomas Thomas Allen from California Balsamic. We'll be making four recipes. And by the way, Babette, every guest that comes on the show gets I two get some samples. balsamic vinegar. You, so I'm going to be sending you an email. You get to choose your choice of flavors. Yay! Thank you. My pleasure. You are just the you are just uh, adorable. I just love I you so much. I miss you, AJ. I love you. Thanks yeah, for me too. Me isn't, isn't she great, guys? So look what you have to look forward to when you're seventy. If yeah, when you you're just... seventy. Hey, look, and seventy with guns like oh. this. What? No. O M G. <laughs> what? A, what? Isn't she amazing? Thanks, Chris. I'm so glad you love the show. All right, everybody. Thanks so much, and Babette, you are welcome anytime to love come you, on. Honey. Thank okay. you. Have a good one.